Awesome. So in this episode, we're going to talk about what opportunities do you have to run away from immediately if you are a returnee diaspora. There are certain opportunities you have to run away from else it will ruin you. And it's not going to be the typical advice that you find around. It's going to be something that is born out of experience and observation. So as you probably might know, I spent a long time in both Europe, precisely United Kingdom, working in, in corporate UK and many more years working in corporate America. And I decided to come back home, um, seven, um, probably about eight years now, uh, to come back home to run businesses. Okay, So I'm sharing things from the depths of my heart, depths of experience. What are the opportunities you have to run away from? And actually, this advice even goes for people who may have businesses here in Africa, but they still are domiciled in the diaspora. It also applies. It's, it's the same thing. I see this happen all the time. A lot of people get burned. You know, you come in, most of the time, you come in, maybe... If, it's, if you're coming in permanently, sometimes you probably have one or two, um, let's say, properties. Maybe you, you probably uh, finish paying off your mortgage or you, you, you sell your house and you, you cash out your equity to come and build a business, right? So you come in and you, you're, st you're looking at, what you're, you are listening in for what makes money. I'm not talking about investment. I'm talking about business. So, so your ear is on the ground looking for or listening to advice about what is hot, what is moving, what is yielding cash flow, what, what, what's the latest business trend. And many people fall for this, um, for, for this, I would say, it, to me, is havoc. Many people fall for that. So to put it in context, there's somebody... I know who, like myself, uh, moved, relocated from, from, from the States to Ghana. And he came with some pretty good money. If, if you know, it's, it's like, it's, the, it's almost like the equivalent of somebody having a house in the East Coast, you know, middle class neighborhood and selling the house and, and cashing all that money and bringing it here. I'm just putting it in context so that you know that that money is obviously more than a million dollars, okay? And brings that money to run a business. So when the person came to run it, you came with a family and everything to run a business, they have, you know, as, as, as I said, they have everything. They have their home, they have their multiple cars, their children are in A-star schools around. You know, they are fine. They are doing very well. And then um, they entered into, I think, two or three businesses. I think three businesses I can remember on top of my head now. So the first business was, I think, a quarry, uh, quarry blasting business. I, I can remember uh, he telling me about it. Uh, you know, where they, I think they, they, it's a construction thing. They, you, they blast rocks and they crash the rocks into like um, aggregate some uh, coarser aggregate or finer aggregate, like stones for building, basically. Let, let, let's not, I will not use any technical jargon. So finer stones or stones for construction, which is a good thing. So he invested very heavily in it, in machinery, equipment, and everything. Then his other, other business, he uh, also set up a grocery uh, shop, quite, not a shop, a grocery mall outlet. It was quite big, you know, so maybe something like... Um, let's say 600 to probably um, maybe 600, maybe a thousand square meters, uh, you know, one of the locations, multiple locations they had, but one of them was like that. Um, and they were doing well in terms of cash flow and everything and everything was moving fine. Then two years down the road, I, I would go to his grocery place and uh, you could see the obvious decline, you know, shelves, emptying out or shells being a little bit lightweight compared to before. They, you know, they are not able to restock at the same volume that they used to when they started. Whenever you, you see that, it, to me, it's a telltale sign of, of cash flow problems. 
Um, so with time, I got to know that he also had issues with the with the querying business or the uh, so he, all his his tipper trucks, the trucks that would carry the 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 rocks from where they are blasted off and 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 uh, to to uh, their clients' site. Uh, he started having problems there. To cut a long story short, by the third year, he was completely wiped out of that business, that quote-unquote quarry business. Then I'll come to the grocery shop later. So I, I was talking to him and he was like giving me counsel, you know, because at that time I was still quite new in the system. He had been in the system a few more years than I did. So he told, so I asked him a few questions. Hey, how did you enter into that business? Because it's quite capital intensive. And he told me, yes, the equipment that he, he bought, leased, uh, value was well, well over a million dollars. I said, well, how did you get into that business? So when I came and I, I, I went around various places, various meetings to find what is the best place to invest in, what are they? And, and I knew definitely that because we're a developing country, uh, construction is always going to be at the top. I said, okay, that, that is awesome. And then... They showed me that, oh, if you have this and you have the trucks and you have the, the machine that will do uh, the conveyor belt thing that will uh, pick the rocks from where they are onto the trucks and you have all the machine, the equipment that goes with it, you will be, you will be printing money. So to him, he said to me, it was a no-brainer. So I quickly put it, put it together and started. Right. Okay. Then I also noticed um, with time, his grocery mall thing also fell apart. It's not just him. I have similar or several examples that I, I know of people who started very well, you know, went into capital intensive things and things that didn't pan out. It happens. You know, I have had to pivot multiple times, you know, of my business. It's, that's the nature of business. Some, some, some succeed. Others don't. It's just like the stock market. It's not every time that the stock price is going to go up. Other times it goes down. Other times it goes sideways. It's, we call it life. It happens. It happens to everybody. Now, but the lesson here is most people listen to friends and family and acquaintances too much when they are about to start a business journey or any entrepreneurship or investment venture. Um, they, and sometimes there's a tint of greed in there. You know, hey, I want to be, I want to make as much money as possible. It's not, there's no problem with making as much money. But when I look at it, I've, I've really observed, I, know, I noticed that the people who are doing very well, particularly very well, returnees who do particularly very well, are people who, who for some strange reason, did not stay too far away from their core competencies. Let me, let me break it down. Are you interested in connecting with expert professionals from the diaspora community? We've built something special, a platform called Find Diaspora Experts. This platform helps you connect with top tier African diaspora experts to get advice over a video call. The use cases for such a platform are many, but let's just run through a few. The first one is this could be used as an expert resource for corporate training. It could also be used as a resource for keynote speaking engagements, also for executive coaching, for special consulting services, and then last but not the least, as a pool of um, expert talent for recruitment. So if you are interested in being the first to know when we onboard new experts or when we launch new expert-led cohort-based courses or training programs, then click the link in the description below to join our early access list. Thanks. And let's jump right back into the video. See you there. These are people, let's say, who work let me use um, Ghana's former um, finance minister. Hey, I, I'm apolitical, okay? I don't care about all 
local politics who win or who I, I don't those things don't really move me okay so i what the example i give doesn't sway any way you know whether it's political i'm politically affiliated or not i don't care but it's just an example so look at somebody like ken Oforeta, who's a former ghana finance minister he's built great businesses and he's done well for himself as a private person you know you can argue his performance as a as a finance minister that's that's beyond the scope of this uh, podcast but you can we, we can argue particularly those who uh, come from ghana if you're watching me from ghana you know that ken of has done a really good job building data data bank and and enterprise insurance group and a whole host of businesses that he has why to me he stayed very, very, very close to his core competency. He's always been in financial services. When he was in America, he was that was his play. That was that was his yard. And when he came back, that became his yard. Okay. But most of the time, when we come back, people will approach you because you have come from, they'll call it, they'll call it a brochure. You've come from outside. You are you are loaded with money. So anybody will come to you, hey. I have this business. You can invest in uh, Uber. Buy 100 vehicles for Uber. Hey, there's money in it. Hey, another person will say, hey, there's water um, water business, right? They, they, you know, water purification and, and bottling business. It's hot, man. Let's, go, let's, let's chase it. Others would say, hey, let's go and build a school because there's money in schools. Let's go and build clinic. There's money in clinic. And then in that nature in us to see wow this is money man i i have so i think i can put money in it that is what is killing a lot of people not literally killing but you know in terms of business killing that's what's killing them so the key here after really sitting back in my own case knowing that hey this is what worked this is what did not work i've come to this conclusion that any opportunity, any business that does not leverage your skills, your core competencies. So in terms of your skill, your experiences, your network. And finally, this is optional, but it's very important. Your distribution. And I'll break them down. So this person that I gave, I shared his story was into a different field. He did successfully well. Think about it. Did successfully well in his, I think he was in real estate and, and um, uh, what do you call it? I think in facilities or whatever it is, facilities management and, and stuff like that, uh, building services management. He, that, that was his bread and butter. But when coming here, I can bet I'm not a betting person, but I can bet my last dollar that he got persuaded by people around him that this is the place to put your money. This is good. The thing is, anytime you veer off your core competency in the area of your skill, experiences, particularly skill, experiences, and networks, what you are going to do is that it's new to you. There are people who will get into those kind of businesses and hit the ground running. But you, because you are new, you are going to pay tuition fees because you don't know anything. You have no knowledge of that industry or your knowledge in that industry may be very, very shallow or scanty. That will not cut it. So the system will force you to pay tuition fees. And sometimes the tuition fees are so expensive that it will wipe you financially clean. So I know many people who come in and no matter how much amount of money they bring in the system, they get back to zero. And sometimes, unfortunately, they have to go back. Sometimes, some, unfortunately, some people even lose their, their share. They lose their, 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 their health, right? God forbid that will not be your portion. But the thing is, if you do not stay as close as possible to something that you are very, you have core competency in, and you let people around you drive you to make those kind of business and investment decisions, you will be in for trouble. And this is the reason why this gentleman, his, um, 
his uh, grocery outlet closed. Guess what? Eight months after his place was shut closed. And this is the reason why. This part of the reason why it closed. His grocery shop closed because most of the people he employed to run the floor, to manage the floor, were stealing from him. Okay. They stole inventory. And he had, it's not that it occurred once. He told me, I think that like the second or third time that it happened, I went there to shop and, and we were talking and he said, hey, this is the biggest problem I'm dealing with. Pilfrey. People are just, not people coming from outside to steal, but staff stealing. And, it's, and he told me he's getting to a point that's unsustainable. So, so I asked him, how are you doing? Do you have CCTV cameras and things? He said, man, I've installed those things. You catch them. You fire them. Sometimes you, you send them to a police station, but you can't recover your money because they've taken your goods, they've eaten it, or they've sold it to other people to survive. So just that killed his business. Now, this is, this is, this is the crust of what I'm, gonna, what I'm talking about. That killed his business. Not, and, and the thing is, yes, you have people, you know, it's like, it's a very serious thing. It's like something cultural where there are certain people or a vast majority of young people who are working, they don't have any ethics, right? They don't have any kind of moral compass. Yes, they may go to church, they may go to all these, you know, religious institutions, but there's a certain type of moral compass that we are trained with when we are growing younger, when our parents instill in us certain disciplines. That, that place, in our late modern day generation, that, that place where parents are able to help instill that discipline in us, regardless of religious persuasion, that place is now a huge area of massive black hole. Nobody's filling that gap, right? Parents are not filling that gap. So people steal and they are not ashamed of it. They steal and go and tell friends that, hey, look, this shop, I went there. I can bring you any good that you want. And it's like, it's like they, 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 they are excited. They, they actually, uh, uh, um, I would say, give them, let, let me lose local colloquial language. Say so they give them fans or they pat them on the back. It's like, hey, it's like they are wearing a badge of honor when they are stealing. In their friends, in the eyes of their friends, it looks cool to steal. And when they take all those kind of products home to nobody questions them, their parents doesn't question them. Their parents are actually even happy that they are bringing maybe three cans of milk home uh, 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 you know, uh, three packs or four packs of sardines, uh, uh, cornflakes. That they are happy that their child is bringing that home, right? So that is there. But the question is, if that was enough to kill my friend's business, what about the other supermarkets that have been in town for years and they are not folding up, but they are multiplying? This is the irony of it. When my friend's grocery shop closed eight months after that, do you know who occupied that building? It's Melcom. And Melcom, it was, it was a Melcom, but Melcom, that Melcom shop is selling just groceries, not the electronics. They have electronics somewhere else, but they are selling Melcom groceries. The same thing my friend was selling. The same thing Melcom is selling. And when I, I actually went to that same Melcom today, and the place is packed, it's filled. They, 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 there's, there's inventory everywhere, right? It's fully packed, fully filled. What is the difference? The difference is that Malcolm has been running these stores for decades. They have mastered this business line of business to the letter. They know how to handle the pill fridge issue they know how to handle employees they know how to handle inventory they know how to handle the entire supply chain they have it covered why because it's their core domain it's their core competency it's their it's their bread and butter so you you cannot go into some into an industry or in an area where you have zero knowledge the only thing you have is money to invest in equipment or money to set it up that is not enough. That is not enough. You are going to pay a tuition fee and that tuition fee can be detrimental. If you are lucky, 
you it the tuition fee may be a couple of thousand dollars or a couple of tens of thousands of, of dollars unfortunately for some people it runs into millions of dollars so do yourself a favor that if you are going to jump into any business venture entrepreneurial venture or anything like that please don't listen to don't listen to people who come and sell you uh, uh, you know, snake oil salesman who come and sell you, oh, this is the biggest, I've had so many of them. I've had people who came to me, uh, I, I, you know, uh, when I came, that they, we needed to, somebody came to me that, oh, wow, he, uh, if I could only buy the equipment for, I think, um, auto spraying boot and kind of thing, um, I will make this money out to be amazing. And it's, it's, I said, man, I don't have any idea, no knowledge in auto care. Actually, I even sometimes struggle to change my own ties. <laughs> so, so I don't have any idea what you are talking about. Yes, let somebody make that money because they understand that domain. Let somebody handle that because that is their, they have been doing that work for 25 years. I'm starting, if, I'm start, if somebody has done it 25 years and I'm starting today, that person's way ahead of me. In terms of knowledge, experience, expertise, network in that industry, that person can just make one phone call and it will, it will change things. Me getting into that space, I don't know Adam. I don't know nobody. My phone calls don't do nothing. Right? So that I hope you found this video useful. And uh, I, I, I look forward to seeing you in my subsequent videos. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, do so. This is amazing this gives value i take my time to create content that brings value um definitely from a place of experience and from experiential knowledge um and to also inspire you that yes you know you too can do great things and also the mistakes that i did or people that i saw made i don't want you to jump into the same mistakes thank you peace god bless